Jillian Pocallo here to show you today how to do silkscreen monoprinting. And um, monoprinting is a really great technique um, where you're creating a one-of-a-kind piece. And so there's never going to be a piece identical to this one that you create, and that's okay. So I'll use um, this monoprinting um, when I'm trying to create like a sort of a background for an image or I'm trying to create a more painterly effect. Um, and there are a lot of different ways to approach this. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of different avenues in to creating some mono prints in your home studio, wherever you are. So today, I just wanted to show you how I kind of use it with other techniques. Um, and one of the reasons why I love silk screening so much is because it is such a versatile print medium. So here we go. So in the case of this one, I used the silk screen mono print technique to create that sort of painterly background that you see. Um, and then I layered my photo silk screens on top. And so that's what you see here. Um, this is one of my older pieces. And then here's another one where that textural sky is using the silkscreen mono printing technique. Then I layered my photo silk screens on top. And then I also um, created a lino cut block and did a block print. And I've done a demo a couple of weeks ago of all you need to know about screen printing. So check that out if you want to see some, um, some how did I get an image onto a screen to print from it. Um, but today I'm just going to show you how to uh, use mono printing techniques um, in accord with, with some of the other stuff that you might have going on with your silk screens. And then, um, so this is also a silk screen mono print, and I approached this a little bit differently. So I had a photo silk screen that I'd already developed, and then I used the mono printing technique. Uh, to create the color that is here. So this is just one silk screen, but I was able to introduce a whole lot more color um, just based on knowing how to do mono printing. So here we go. So what I've got today on my work table is I've got a uh, speedball silk screen. Um, I really love these ones with the wooden balusters because in my studio, I only have so much room. Um, as you might be able to tell. And I have a bank of, of screens that um, I've sort of cataloged, but I don't like to reclaim my screens. I like to be able to pull the mesh off and then restretch a screen um, so that I'm able to keep printing from screens later on. So um, that's just my personal preference. Uh, but the great thing about art is that everybody has their own personal preference, right? So, so I'm gonna use this screen today um, and then I'm also using water soluble crayons. These things are like watercolors in crayon form. They're awesome. Um, I'm also going to be using some watercolors and um, of course water. And then I'm also going to be using the Speedball transparent base. And this stuff is awesome. It's really just um, ink without any pigment in it. So it works really great for this process and it also works if you have a color that you mix and you just need to knock back how opaque that color is, you can add the transparent base to it um, in small increments, they say about 10 to 15 percent, and then you can build up transparencies. So for instance, if you're printing like a red and then you want to have an orange and you print a yellow over top, you'll get the, those two colors to blend in the layers. So this stuff is really awesome. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Like when I, I like to use this silk screen mono printing technique, um, for creating backgrounds. So right now I'm going to think about this in terms of backgrounds. So, um, I mean, I could direct color on here if I wanted. And I'm using the water soluble crayons. Now, one word to the wise is um, that, like, these are not regular crayons, and I, I need to be specific with that, because if you did use regular crayons, what you're actually going to be doing is, when you draw on the screen, you're going to be blocking the screen. You can use that to your advantage, right? If you wanted to create a stencil that way, that could work, but for right now, that's not what I'm going for. Right now, I want to try and get this color on here to be able to transfer onto a piece of paper when I print from it. 
So I could keep coloring and we can pretend that I did a really great job coloring and I spent a lot of time working on that, but that would be really boring for you to see me do the whole thing. So instead what I'm gonna do is grab some stuff that I have from my garden. So here's one of these things. Um, and I'm gonna create a rubbing because I wanna get that texture. So if you've ever done a rubbing like from a gravestone or something like that, you can do it really easily. Um, you know what, actually, I'm gonna grab a different pastel for real quick. Because of course, when you're doing a rubbing, you want the paper to be off. And if you can see this set of crayons I have, I'm not ready to totally take the paper off of all of these yet. Um, so, all right, I'm gonna create a rubbing here of this. I don't even know what that plant is. It came with the house. Maybe you can tell me what it is. It's an evergreen and it's very pretty. And I like it very much, but I have no idea what it's called. So I'm creating a rubbing and I could do this with a bunch of different kinds of textures. Um, I am a woman who really digs texture. So I'm gonna kinda of go in different directions. Might as well try this with a couple of other colors just for the sake of saying, hey, you don't have to just use red for this. You can use all different colors. I could, oh, uh, let's, let's do that guy. All right, so that's some natural textures that I've got on my screen right now. Um, when I go grocery shopping, not often anymore, but when I go grocery shopping, I'll usually like look and see if I can buy stuff like this so that in these bags so that I can use it in artwork because I always love to recycle. So here we go. I'm just gonna take this and do another textural rubbing. Again, I mean, of course, I could do a drawing here if I wanted to. Um, and then now that I've got some cool stuff going on here, I think I might actually add some watercolor paint to this just to kind of see what I get. I haven't used yellow yet, so we'll add a little bit of yellow here. Now, I'm not, col when I color with this technique, I'm not trying to color really, really, really dark. Um, I'm just sort of lightly, right there. I'm just sort of lightly um, passing the water soluble crayon over the surface of my screen. In other words, it's okay to have light shining through at this point. There we go. All right, so I am gonna try and pull a print from this. Um, I don't know if you can see it really well, but I've got a lot of different textures. I've got some watercolor on here. I've got some watercolor crayon on here. And now I can take a piece of paper and lay this down. And I don't even know really what this is gonna turn out like, but I think it's probably gonna be pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna pour a glop at the top of my transparent base. Gravity's working today, folks. That's awesome. All right, and then I'm gonna grab my squeegee. And I am just going to pull it across my screen. Now that extra goop um, the extra stuff, I usually try and save it because at some point you might need just a random color. Um, one thing to note though is that this technique is not for 
t-shirts and textiles because you're since you're using all water-based water soluble media um, it's just not gonna work and what do you know I need a container for this stuff hold on So I'm just going to kind of recapture some of that in this tray and see what I get. All right, so you can see how I was able to pull out pretty much everything that I had done on that screen. And it gets you this really sort of wispy, um, luminous colorway. And you can see this really nicely. Now, the, the, one of the virtues of this um, technique is that so long as you don't put your transparent base on here, you can um, leave all of the watercolor media and your, um, your water-soluble crayons on here for a while. So as soon as you, like you have an infinite amount of time until you introduce this. And now I'm gonna kind of work a little bit more quickly because I don't want the ink to dry on my screen. Um, if you've ever done screen printing before, you know that if your ink dries on your screen, then you can kind of say bye-bye to your screen um, because it will clog it and then you're kind of kind of out of luck. The working time that I have with this is, is pretty expansive, so I don't have to worry too much about that. So if I wanted to keep going with this, I could pull a ghost print. I'm probably not gonna be able to pull too much off, but I am gonna do some fun stuff with this anyway. So I can introduce more color, and now it's gonna be a little bit more wispy and washy, a colorway. I'm still gonna be able to pull up some of what I've got here. I'm gonna introduce a little more watercolor because I liked that effect. <laughs> and what's nice is that if you have this sort of um, matrix that you can work from, you could also kind of keep adding more color in that way and build up an addition of sorts. Um, greatest thing is because you're the artist you get to make those kinds of choices for yourself all right but I'm gonna just kind of change the colorways a little bit here just to kind of play with it and make it a little bit different so let's see what I can get this way and so again I'll use this technique a lot of the time for backgrounds just to kind of build up visual texture um, before I do this let me do something fun so I could keep printing on blank paper, but actually I'm gonna do something even different. So here's a print that I made. This was a carborundum print that didn't turn out the way I liked it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce um, this mono printing technique and it'll fill in those areas around this image. So it might make it more interesting. Um, so I'm gonna just lay this down. And you know what, actually, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, I have a bunch of prints that sort of didn't quite make the addition. They were like, all right, so this was a black photo silk screen that I did. It's okay, but I'm going to see if a mono print behind it can make it more interesting and, and prettier. All right, so I'm just going to add a little more of the clean transparent base. I'm going to take my squeegee and I am going to screen print the transparent base. I'm just going to do two passes just to kind of see if I can get as much as I possibly can. And I'm going to reclaim some of that ink for that transparent base. And see, now it makes it a lot more textural, a lot more intriguing. Um, and so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I can set that aside or I can keep adding to it if I want. Um, now one other thing you can also do 
is you can tape off certain areas. So um, I'm just using regular old masking tape or blue tape or painter's tape, doesn't really matter. Um, and you can create stencils just on the surface of the screen. Now this might be kind of weird because it's um, there's so much transparent base on my screen, but we'll see if we can get it to work. So if you want to mask off different areas and create a stencil this way, you also can. I will just keep it at that. All right, how about we do that? And let me just add a little more texture here. So I'm gonna take my little textural thing, my bag, and I'm just gonna take another water-soluble crayon, create a rubbing, and uh, I'm gonna take my transparent base after I put a piece of paper underneath it here. I'm take a piece of paper. Again, this is one of those where it was like, okay, I did a print, wasn't in love with it, but maybe if I add some visual texture to this, I can make it more interesting. So I'm gonna kinda get a little funky here. There's this one little silly piece of tape that just will not be chill. Sorry, little silly piece of tape. I see you. If you're at home and you've got a bunch of stickers lying around, this would also work. You, anything that's sticky, you can stick down on here. Oh, you know what? There is way too much transparent base for this part of this process, but that's okay. We'll see what I got. I'm just gonna do a little back and forth. Even so, you can see how the masking tape sort of blocked off areas and was able to create its own kind of a stencil. And so now it's a sort of more intriguing image, right? Um, I really like the luminosity that this project or that this process affords. Um, you know, even the areas where it's just the transparent base on the surface of the paper, it just builds this lovely sort of a glow um, that I think is is really nice. And that's gonna stay because, you know, you can see, even see where the paper, um, the difference between where the transparent base is and the paper is. So uh, I'm gonna set that aside. And one cardinal rule about screen printing is if you have a screen that's got um, ink or transparent base on it, you just wanna try and add water to it until you get to wash it out or you want to wash it out immediately so that you don't wind up getting your screen clogged. And so let me show you another fun thing about this process. There are a lot of fun things about this process. Um, so for this screen, I already have an image developed on the screen, right? I already um, created my photo silk screen and I burned it and I exposed it and then I washed it out and now I'm left with a screen. And I could just print this in black over and over again or whatever color and create an addition. But in this case, I want to use some of my mono printing techniques to create a one of a kind piece. So uh, what I've done was I, spent a little bit of time coloring this area in with the, the water-soluble crayons. And now I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time on those rugged rocks and I'm gonna apply some watercolor here. So again, this is, if you're, if you're like a painterly kind of person, this is a really fun way to keep that painterly effect while at the same time uh, having the structure and you know line quality of a screen print. And I mean I 
can even go so far as being painterly, like where I'm allowing some drips to happen. And I'll probably be able to capture some of those. Um, again, any water soluble media will work for this technique. I haven't used um, watercolor pencils just because I, ha I haven't used them since college, um, truthfully, um, other than in my own classroom. Um, but you could use them. It, you just have to be careful with the point, right? So I can't imagine it wouldn't work. Um, so I'm going to take a piece of paper. And right now I'm starting with a blank piece. But I mean, the, the greatest thing about screen printing, right, is that you all of this stuff can be used interchangeably. So I could do a monoprint background just like, like I showed you with a blank screen. I could do a monoprint background and have some type of visual texture if I wanted, and then I could layer this on top, um, you know, provided that the colors worked out. But I'm just going to do it real simple so that you can see it really clearly. And I'm going to kind of get rid of some of this extra. Um, when I'm teaching my adult printmaking class, we usually have one jar of transparent base that's just like the yuck colors, the who knows what color was that could be. And then we have one that's super clean. And, um, and for the super yuck, we just kind of figure out you know, maybe maybe somebody wants that sort of a grayish, brownish beige. I read somewhere that if all the colors in the world were mixed together, they would make beige, which admittedly kind of disappointed me. I thought it would be more of like a gray or a brown or something. But anyway, so I'm going to start up at the top. I'm going to pull my squeegee down at a 45 degree. All right, and let's see what we got here. So you can see how I have that sort of more painterly effect. Um, the, you know, the, the, where the transparent base was able to sort of reconstitute some of that, um, that image, uh, the, the coloring that I did, it was able to print it out in color. So if you're trying to introduce color, but you don't want to have, you know, a screen for each different color, this is a really great way to introduce color to your screen prints. Um, now, just because I want to see what I can get, I'm going to try a ghost print with the same way. I'm not going to do anything to my screen. I'm just going to see what I can pull up with the ghost print um, and see how that turns out. A little more transparent base. transparent base on the squeegee. Alright, I'm hoping I got quite a bit of ink that way. Alright, so we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see what I was able to achieve here and you can see what I was able to achieve with the other one. Um, so this was my first, right? And so that watercolor that was in the bottom part, um, there's a little bit more that was coming through that way. But here I was able to get a little bit more definition in the rooftop of this building. So you can kind of see how like each print is going to, even if you do the exact same thing, each print is going to have some variation to it, um, which is the very definition of a mono print set those aside for now and I might um, knowing how I think of my printmaking I will probably go back in and I'll paint a sky and you know I'll kind of do something to make this pop even more um, but that's just how I like to be in my studio uh, but one other thing I wanted to show you there's lots of things I wanted to show you actually um, but I wanted to show you how you can also so when I, I do screen prints um, or when I develop my screens I'll usually do two images on one um, this is a 
12 by 16 frame. Um, so I'm able to fit two eight and a half by 11 pieces on here. And so for me, it just makes more sense. Um, my logic is, you know, if I've gone and I've photographed a place, um, I will usually develop two screens that are kind of similar on the same, I will usually develop two images on the same screen that are kind of similar so I can kind of like go along with a theme. But that's just how I think about things. Um, every single artist has a different way of doing things. So I wanted to show you another way you can introduce color based on um, creating some stenciling. Uh, so this is also like in the world of mono printing, but you can also, you know, you can kind of have fun with it. So what I've created here was a stencil uh, using um, Bean Fang marker paper. Um, it makes really good stencils because it holds up for a couple of uh, prints. And so what I'm going to try here is I'm just going to block out a part of my screen. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a piece of paper underneath all of this. And then I'm going to put down one of my stencils. And I'm going to kind of register by eye my screen on top of that stencil. I'm going to grab two colors to show you this. So the stencil that I put down was a an outline of just this part. So because that part is going to be blocked, what I'm going to get is everything except that. So if I want to go with the same color scheme that I did on the other half of the screen, what I can do is just put down a little glob of ink and I can take my squeegee and I can pull my squeegee across my screen. And so you can see how, because I put that one stencil down, it printed everything except where the stencil was, right? And so if I was going for precision and, you know, if I wanted to print an addition like this, um, I would wash my screen, I would use my registration board, I would use my, my clips, I would, you know, we, I would basically set myself up for registering properly, um, but because I'm just trying to do this quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other stencil, and now all I want to do is I want to print, I want to print this part right here, so I can take my paper stencil, and I'm going to be working kind of quickly, so I'm not worried about this sticking too much, and I'm going to take that, all right. And so again, if I was doing this in addition printing and I wanted this to be perfect, then I would totally wash it out, re-register it, blah, 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 blah. But just to show you kind of quickly um, and drama free, I'm going to do this this way. All right, so that's kind of good. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take another color. And what's kind of neat is because I still have some ink on the screen, chances are I'm, I'm gonna pick up some of that red in the black, although black tends to overpower any other colors that are near it. So um, I might get a sort of a marbly effect, which technically is mono printing, right? Okay, so. When I remove my paper stencils, that you can see they hold up really well, right? There's a lot of ink on these things and the, the marker paper holds up really nicely. Then you can also see how I was able to introduce some other color techniques 
and was able to get some color blending and just some sort of a modeled textural effect. So, um, so yeah, so that's another way to introduce color. If you only have one screen, you've spent all the time burning it, and what can you do? How can you introduce color? These are just some other uh, approaches to it. Um, so, you know, one of the great things about mono printing is you can go down so many rabbit holes with these techniques, right? You can do create stencils, you can create texture rubbings, you can create like a whole bunch of different effects. Um, and the sky's really kind of the limit. Um, but just to show you one more time, because I had pulled this one screen and it has been needing some love for a while. Um, I have this one. Uh, I, I've, this is a screen that I've used for a lot of demos, um, but this one just keeps being awesome. It's, I took a, my, my little students, my elementary school students, picked me a bouquet of flowers and what's an art spo teacher supposed to do when that happens? She flattens them out and she burns a silk screen of them because that's necessary. So what I did was I took those and I actually, um, you know, burned a silk screen with these flowers on them. Um, and so now I have a screen that I can keep printing from. It's the gift that keeps on giving, just like their flowers. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm not going to spend the time to do everything, right? But um, let me just spray down this screen so I don't that guy doesn't dry out because I do like that screen and I don't want to lose it. All right. But what I can do is show you how all of these different techniques can kind of play together all at once and that's okay too. Um, so what I'm going to do is take the textures. So I have this photo silk screen that I burned. I'm going to take some of those textures that I found in my garden and I'm going to apply all of this to this little screen. Now the ink is gonna be able to pass through the areas where um, it's open, right? Like where the stencil itself is open. So I'm able to create a texture rubbing in these open areas down here. Um, and then I can, so like you can kind of see where the green is popping through, right? Um, and then I could take, I could draw on the screen just like people might do. Now this is a really, this is also a really interesting way to add shading and tone, right? Like if you're trying to go and add shading to a stem, in fact, I will do that just to show you. I'm going along the areas where the stem is open. And I'm gonna go along that. There's a flower bottom there. All right, and then I'm gonna take another color and I'm gonna go along the other side of the stem to kind of create this illusion of light. So one of the things about screen printing is usually you think it's, it's just one flat color, right? You print in one color um, there's so many ways to apply color and make your screen printing even more dynamic. All right, so I'm just going to go quickly. Um, and then for the flower part, I'm just going to take that texture of that bag and I'm going to do a little bit of a rubbing. You know what? I just realized I have a crochet thing that I made. Let's see if I can get a good texture from that. Sort of. All right, it's a something. And then I'm just gonna take this guy. I really like that texture. Whatever, whatever plant that is that I have in my yard, I really like it. It makes for very good textures. So if you see in some of my artwork, um, you may see that texture popping up a lot because I use it a lot. 
All right, so I've, I've done all of this, and now just because I like to kind of show how you can create all of the things with all of the things, I'm going to take a little piece of this marker paper, and I'm just gonna cut out a little, a little silly stencil. stick that somewhere on my paper. I haven't decided yet where I'm going to put it. Okay. So we're just going to put a little, I guess we'll put it right there. That's good. Where is it? Okay. It's somewhere. That's fine. Okay. And I'm going to take my transparent base up at the top. Sometimes when I say, when people are asking me how much ink should I put out, I'll usually say like as much Nutella as you would put on your bread if you're a Nutella fan. And then I realize that some people are really big Nutella fans and that's not enough. So, you know, however much you think. Um, you essentially want enough ink that it's going to go through the screen and be able to get your whole image. I did not clean off my squeegee completely, so I still had a little bit of ink on that squeegee. So it might actually help me create a, oh, a really cool image. Right. So you can see how I was able to capture that luminosity, I was, you were able to see how I was able to create all of that texture and, um, and that my friends is silkscreen mono printing. And I encourage you to have fun with this. I encourage you to make all kinds of cool stuff with this process and just see, see where it takes you. Um, because the great thing about silkscreen mono print is it's a one of a kind. And so you can get to be really experimental with this. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon and happy printmaking.